Hey everybody, it's Derek Kilmartin from CodePinion.com and today we're going to take a look at the .NET Core command line interface also known as the CLI. In this video I'm going to cover the basics of the CLI. I'll cover some of the more advanced features in other videos such as packaging and publishing. Before I get right into it, you need to make sure that you have the .NET Core SDK. You can get that from .NET and download and install the latest. In this video, I'm using the .NET Core SDK Preview 2. I'm going to create a folder on my desktop which I'll use as a working directory for anything that I execute from the CLI. Now I'm going to open PowerShell. You can use the command prompt as well. I just prefer PowerShell. If you type .NET dash dash help it will bring up usage information. In this video I'll be covering the new, restore, build, and run commands. First let's take a look at the new command. The new command is for scaffolding projects. It's similar to Yeoman. If you type .NET new dash dash help you can see more options for the new command. Since I want to create a basic .NET hello world application in C Sharp I can type .NET new dash L C Sharp. Now if we look at the directory we can see that the .NET new command created a new program.cs and project.json. Now our next step is going to be to restore the dependencies that our new application needs. That's where .NET restore comes in. The restore command will download all the required packages from NuGet. So let's take a look at .NET restore's additional options. If we type .NET restore dash dash help we will see all the available options. I'll run the restore with informational verbosity. Now we can see some log information and that the restore completed. Alright, so let's run our hello world application. We can do this by using the run command. As you can expect, there are additional options to the run command. If you type .NET run dash dash help, you can see the additional options here. Since I'm in my working directory of this project, I don't need to specify anything else. So I'm just going to type .NET run. This will compile our application and then run it. You can see it printed out hello world at the very bottom, which is all this application does at the moment. So the last command we're going to look at is the build command. The run command was actually calling the build command prior to running. So let's type .NET build dash dash help. One of the common options you might specify is the output directory. So if we type .NET build dash dash o, I'm going to put this in the bin directory a level above our working directory. When you specify the output folder, you must also specify the framework. So in our case, we're using NetCore App 1.0. Now that it's built, let's take a look at the bin directory and see the output. And those are the basics of the .NET CLI. As mentioned, I'll have other videos on the CLI, such as publishing a self-contained app which doesn't require .NET Core installed on the target machine. Please subscribe for more .NET related videos. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. 